Hi, my name's MJ. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Maryland, and I'm here to talk to you today about factors associated with urinary tract infection and, and urosepsis after renal transplant. I have nothing to disclose. So last year, there were over 23,000 renal transplants that occurred in the US. And a study out of Australia showed that UTIs can occur in up to one third of transplant recipients within one year of their transplant. And though UTIs are often relatively benign in most people, in these immunosuppressed transplant recipients, um, it can have detrimental effects on their graft function, especially if there's progression to urosepsis. So what we wanted to do was to see if there was any risk factors that were associated with UTI and urosepsis in these transplant patients to identify patients that would benefit from closer follow-up. In order to do so, we did a retrospective chart review of 651 renal transplant patients that underwent transplant between 2016 and 2019. We collected data on their past medical history, their past surgical history, their dialysis parameters, and their urinary status prior to transplant. And our two primary outcomes were UTI and urosepsis requiring hospitalization within one year of transplant. So what we found was that overall 13% of our patients developed UTIs within one year of transplant. In total, 8% or 52 of our patients de developed urosepsis requiring hospitalization also within one year of transplant. In regards to past medical history, diabetes was the only statistically significant association with UTIs after transplant, and there was nothing associated with urosepsis after transplant. Interestingly enough, even history of recurrent UTIs prior to transplant was not associated with UTIs after transplant. And past surgical history had no significant associations, including past history of renal transplant. Urinary status prior to transplant was one of the parameters that we looked at. So we wanted to know whether they were making normal amounts of urine, whether they were aneuric, or whether they were oliguric. And so starting with UTIs, you can kind of see the raw numbers here, but focusing in on anuria, you can see that 179 out of our 651 patients, were about a quarter of them, were anuric prior to transplant. Of these patients, 148 did not develop UTIs, while 31 of them did develop UTIs. And this was a statistically significant association with a p-value of 0.039. Moving on to urosepsis, again, here are the raw numbers, but we'll focus in on anuria again. You can see that 159 of these patients did not develop urosepsis, while 20 of them did develop urosepsis. The p-value here is 0 0.065, so it does not quite reach statistical significance, but it's definitely trending in that direction. So overall, anuria is definitely associated with UTIs and urosepsis after transplant. Dialysis status was another factor that we looked at, whether they were on dialysis at all, whether that was hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, and how long they had been on dialysis for before they received their transplant. So looking at UTIs first, you can see the raw numbers here, but interestingly enough, none of these were statistically significant. However, looking at urosepsis, again, the raw numbers aren't too impressive, but the time on dialysis varied by almost 400 days between the no urosepsis and the urosepsis group. And though this didn't reach statistical significance, the p-value was trending in that direction. So in conclusion, diabetes and anuria are identifiable risk factors associated with the development of UTI and urosepsis. And now knowing this information, we can optimize these patients' antibiotic and immunosuppression plans, um, and we can identify those people that benefit from close monitoring so that we can protect graft function. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time.